This is Algebra 2, Chapter 10, Section 1, in which we will study sequences as functions. A sequence is nothing more than a set of values that are in a certain order. Okay. The order that they're in is important. Each one of those values has a special name. It's called a term. Okay, don't get that confused with things like like terms that we've dealt with earlier. These are just items that are in the sequence. Typically, they follow some kind of a pattern. Most of the time, they will be either add something to get to the next term, or it will be subtract something, or multiply by something, or divide by something. Okay, those are the typical kind. There are other types. We'll deal with those as they come up. But those are the basic ones. Now sequences have a couple of options. They can be finite. That is to say they can come to an end. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, stop. That's a finite sequence. They can also be infinite. That is, they can go on and on and on forever. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, da, 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 da where it continues on. That would be an infinite type sequence. Now the way in math that we identify the terms is to use a subscript. This little one that's down at the bottom is a subscript. A1 stands for the first term. A2 is the second. A10 is the tenth. Whatever value is here they're telling you it's that number in the sequence, that, that spot, the tenth spot out in this case. Uh, typically we'll use A for our terms, just because that's the way they're done. It could be any letter, but usually you're going to see it as A. Now there are some special kinds of sequences out there. The first one is called an arithmetic sequence. I know the word looks like arithmetic, but when it's used as an adjective here, it's arithmetic. Pronunciation changes. Don't blame me, blame the English people. They, they're the ones that made the rules. But when we're talking about arithmetic sequences, what we're looking at is each term is found by adding something on to the previous term. Now, adding, remember, could also be subtracting if you're adding a negative value. So either way, if it's always add something or it's always subtract something, we're talking about an arithmetic sequence. The value that we're adding on each time is called the common difference for that sequence. Okay. So they want us to determine if we're looking at an arithmetic sequence. And if we are, then they want us to name the common difference. And we have a sequence here, 7, and then 12, and then 16, and then 20, and then so forth. What do we add to 7 to get to 12? We add 5. From 12 up to 16, we add 4. That's not looking good. We had 4 to get to 20. We didn't add the same thing each time. So this one is not an arithmetic sequence. Now compare that to this one. From negative 6 to 3, we need to add 9. From 3 to 12, we add 9. From 12 to 21, we add 9. We're adding 9 each time. So this is an arithmetic sequence, and the common difference is 9. And we usually use D to represent the, distance, the difference. Okay. They're also going to throw this at us in a couple of other ways. They want us to find the next three terms of the sequence. 18, and then 11, and then 4, and then they want us to find more terms. Well, to get from 18 to 11, we have to subtract 7, or you can think of it as add a negative 7. 
from 11 to 4 is also subtracting 7. That tells me my d. My d is to subtract 7. 4 minus 7 gives me negative 3. Minus 7 again gives me negative 10. Minus 7 again gives me negative 17. And because I can't read directions apparently, it says find the next three terms, and I found four. So, uh, yeah, one for free, I guess. Another way they can give us the same idea to work with is we have our friend Geraldo here, who was hired to work at $9 an hour, and he gets a 15 cent raise every three months. So the question is, how much will he earn per hour three years from now? Well, we know three years is the same as 36 months, 3 times 12. And we needed that in months because the, the time involved in changing his pay was in months. Our 36 months divided by 3 months for every raise means he's going to get 12 raises over that period of time. Well, if I take the 12 raises times 15 cents every time he gets a raise, that's $1.80. What should we do with this $1.80? Add it back to the $9 he started from, and that will give you his final pay of $10.80. Doesn't sound too bad. Now I told you there's a couple of different types. We talked about the arithmetic sequence. Now we need to look at the geometric sequence. And that's the sequence where you're multiplying by some constant every time. And that could also be dividing because you're multiplying by a fraction. You could think of it that way. And the constant that's being used is called the common ratio. Not the common difference this time, the common ratio. So let's first determine if we have a geometric sequence, and if so, identify the ratio involved. Okay. Negative 8 to 2 is dividing by a negative 4. 2 divided by negative 4 is negative 0.5. This divided by negative 4 does give me 0 0.125. So yes, I am looking at a geometric sequence. The r is negative 1 fourth. Remember, dividing is the same as multiplying by a fraction. So r is negative 1 fourth. Now consider this one. 1 times 3 gives me 3. So for this to be geometric, I would need to multiply by 3 again. 3 times 3 is not 7. 3 times 7 is certainly not 15. So no, this one is not geometric. So now the only thing left to look at is we're going to find the next three terms of a geometric sequence. And this time you can tell from the boxes on the screen I followed directions and did three terms. First thing we need to do is figure out r. 7 times what gives me 21? 3. 21 times 3 is indeed 63, so that tells me my r is 3. Now to get the next term, we're going to take 63 times 3, which is 189. To get the 1 after 189, we'll take 189 times 3, gives me 567. And then to get the next one, 567 times 3, and my calculator told me it was 1701. You'll notice that geometric sequences get big in a hurry. If you're multiplying by something larger than 1, that's going to keep getting bigger and bigger. So these answers, when you're de dealing with geometrics, they're likely to become large numbers. Don't let that freak you out.
As always, if you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.